The purpose of this experiment is to determine the Young's modulus of a copper wire. We will also calculate the different stresses at different states. We will then model our data through the use of graphs. Here is our list of materials. This experiment could be replicated easily based on these materials. To be more specific on the materials that we used, we will show you the assembly. The structure was designed to minimize the weak points which would have given errors in our results. This was done by the use of pulleys. The vertical pulley allows the stress in the wire to be transferred from the vertical to horizontal orientation without weakening the wire or without losing any stress. Simply not knotting the ends of the wire would have also created weak points at those knots, so we eliminated this by using pulleys at both ends. By wrapping the wire around the pulley, the force of friction acts as a knot without weakening the wire. We use this for both of our fixed ends. We are using the tape to monitor the deformation of the wire. The tape will move proportionally to the wire's deformation. The tape is placed at the beginning of each yardstick. The distance between the two pieces of tape is 4 feet. This is convenient because the beginning of one yardstick is at one of the constraints and the beginning of the other yardstick is roughly in the middle of the wire, which will allow us to compare the strain. Now for the experiment. We will allow the bucket to hang four inches off the edge so there will be an even eight feet for our initial length. Some notes before we start, the bucket has a weight of 1.125 pounds, which will be added in to our total force. We will start the experiment by increasing the force acting on the wire by one pound increments. One. Okay. Notice that the copper wire does not begin to deform immediately. This is because we have not added enough weight for the wire to deform or yield. The amount of weight it takes for the wire to start to yield will be used as the force when calculating our, our yield stress. Two. We will continue to add weight until the wire begins to yield. Sixteen. Some notes on the experiment was that when the wire broke, that it broke in the middle, and also that the strain was roughly the same at the initial constrained end as it was in the middle. Therefore, the wire's deformation was roughly uniform. After the experiment, we now know our force, original length, cross-sectional area, and our deformation. Now we have all the information we need to solve for yield stress, ultimate stress, and the Young's modulus. This graph shows how the stress affected the wire strain. The slope of this line is equal to the Young's modulus, which is roughly the same as our calculated value. This linear estimation may not yield the most accurate results, but we believe as a whole it yields sufficient results when calculating our Young's modulus. Our results varied slightly from the actual results. We believe this is due to error. There are several forms of error that could be taken into account in this experiment. There's the human error when measuring the deformation of the copper wire. You could look at the actual copper wire itself and say that there was a weak point that we had not a accounted for that would have broke before the rest of the wire. And the wire may have also not been pure copper, which would also skew the results. The apparatus could have also had a design flaw that would have uh, skewed our results as well. We believe the value we calculated though is still applicable for this wire since it broke in the middle and not at a weak point or believed to be a weak point. Also the, the Young's modulus is lower than the uh, anticipated 
which shows that worst case scenario that our wire was just weaker than the actual uh, specimen they had.